Greetings to all in the most blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a blessing and honor for me to meditate again from the word of the Lord with you today on the topic Overcoming the World, which is a reference from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Many of the decisions that we take have a major effect on our life. The schools we attend, the person we marry, the profession we follow, the position we accept. But there is a, no decision with such widespread influence for time. In eternity as a decision we make about Jesus Christ. Apostle John speaks of this decision and the new birth that results as he opens chapter 5. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So when we see here the term Christ or Messiah embodies much biblical truth. It brings to our attention about both the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. According to the Old Testament, when we see the one who came to be the Messiah would not only be the son of David, but he would also be the son of God. During the course of his earthly life, Jesus Christ laid less claim to being Mary's son and he placed more emphasis on being the son of God. Man could not redeem man, only God could do that. After offering himself to Israel as a Messiah, Christ authenticated his person by the many miracles he performed. As the disciples saw the wonders and signs that came from his hands, they were led to the conviction that this one was the Son of God and they believed on him as we see in Matthew chapter 16 verse 16. My dear friends, salvation depends on accepting the person of Jesus Christ, consenting to the biblical truth that he is the Son of God. Faith itself does not save. It is a person, the Savior, who saves. The term Messiah, who brings to our attention the work of Christ, God made it clear in the Old Testament that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. The Messiah is described in Isaiah. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And he with the strips, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. As we see in Isaiah chapter 53 verses 5 to verses 6. The Messiah must become the sin bearer in death. So one who comes to Christ, not only really trust him as a person, 
but he also trusts his work at Calvary. Their sinless blood was shed to provide a covering for the sins of the world. And we must trust in his work of Christ. In verse 5, John says that whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ or Messiah is born of God. John next presents three evidences of the new birth. In verses 5, he says, Everyone that loved him, that begot loved him, also that is begotten of him. My dear friends, this is the summary of what John has presented in chapters 3 and fall so emphatically. God has commanded those who love him to demonstrate this love by loving those whom he loves. Love for the brethren becomes the first evidence of the new birth. Love cannot originate in the heart of a natural man. Because he is selfish and his love is directed in word, when one can go beyond the bounds of natural love and manifest the love of God. When one can love unself unselfishly, this is the evidence of being born into the family of God. So after a worship service in Africa, in which I had the privilege of taking part, uh, one of the missionaries handed me a poem by an anonymous writer entitled Perfect Love. In a simple and practical style, these lines describe our love for fellow believers. It says like this, slow to suspect, quick to trust, slow to condemn, quick to justify, slow to offend, quick to defend, slow to expose, quick to shield, slow to remanent, quick to forbear, slow to belittle quick to appreciate, slow to demand, quick to give, slow to hinder, quick to help, slow to provoke, quick to consolidate, slow to resent, quick to forgive. In verses 2 and 3, John presents a second evidence of the new birth. My beloved friends, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. The second proof of the new birth is obedience to the word of God. Christ said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. He, he that loved me, not keep it, not my sayings. As we see in John chapter 14, verses 23 to verse 24. Or again, we can see in John chapter 15, verses 10, which says, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. So there is an upper room. Jesus impressed on the disciples that God expected implicit obedience to his word. 
as an evidence of their love. My dear friends, disobedience is essentially a sin against love. For one to profess to love God and refuse to obey his commandments is not a sign of affection. It is a sign of hatred. Hatred and obedience are equated in the thinking of the apostle. The Lord made this clear when he spoke to the Pharisees who considered themselves to be the sons of God. And he told the parable of the man and two sons. The father told the first son to go and he consented but he did not go. He told the second son to go and he refused but then went out and did what his father had commanded. The Lord asked the Pharisees, which of the two was truly the son of the father? Unable to escape the logic of our Lord's presentation, they replied that the true son was the one who did what the father commanded. So doing the will of God rather than merely discussing it is a proof of sonship. The last phase in verse 3. His commandments are not grievous. It refers to our attitude toward the will of God and the word of God. Many believers think that the will of God is something to be endured or they take up their cross and stumble along crushed by the will of God. But Apostle John says, the will of God is not grievous. Submission to the will of God allows the grace of God to help us to adapt to difficult circumstances or adapt to difficult circumstances of our life journeys. In verses 4 and 5, John gives a third evidence to us of the new birth. The one born again overcomes the world. For whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world even our faith. Who is he that overcome the world? But he that believed that Jesus is the Son of God. So overcoming the world means that one manifest love of God and love of God's truth instead of the hatred displayed by the world name. Let me end my message, my dear friends, by saying John was not thinking here of the things that are in the world, things we so often characterize as being worldly. He is talking about the world's hatred of Jesus Christ. And the only way that one can rise above the attitude of this world which you and I live in is the only way one can rise above that basic sin nature which with which he was born is to walk by faith. May the Holy Spirit of God help us to walk in faith and live a life that is pleasing to God by overcoming this world which you and I live in, overcoming the temptation of Satan, Overcoming the temptation that this world leads us. And let us not be a magnet that attracts to sin. But let us be a magnet that attracts to Jesus Christ. May the God lead us. God bless you.